Hey there, fellow marketers, Professor Walters here, and today we're in Key West, Florida, and today we're gonna to talk about are some of the trends and future trends in B2B marketing when it comes to social media, okay? And, and I think one of the most important things you need to realize, the trend that's out there when it comes to B2B marketing and social media marketing is people want more content in more places. It is no longer just, I will give them a call, I will do a personal visit to see them. Yes, you still do that, but people are making decisions before they even talk to you. Before they even you even pick up that phone call to call them, you know, they're probably 80% of the way there to decide if they're gonna shop with you or not. So you need to have the content out there. People are making those decisions based on online information. So you need to have more content in more places to make it easier for them to make decisions. I know people like to hide their prices and hide all this other stuff, but the thing is, is people are already deciding. They're gonna look and see what other people are charging and that's gonna, they're gonna base everything off of that or they're gonna see what's being offered there. If you just say, well, call us for a quote or call us for more information, dude, people don't like to call anymore. They wanna send a text, they wanna send an email. Give that information out there, put that information out there so they know because hiding content, hiding information from your customers just upsets them. Why aren't you talking about your return policy? Why aren't you talking about your cancellation policies for you know your hotels for group stays? I mean, I need to know these things before I can make a decision. So I'm gonna go to the Hilton instead of the Holiday Inn. Because really limiting the information that they get is limiting your customer's ability to make a decision. And they wanna make their decisions or have some ideas before they actually contact you or get involved with you, okay? Now, another thing you have to realize when, it, I mean, this isn't a trend, this is for everything really is, is with social media, you need to make sure you have a positive return on investment. Look, you need to be tracking how much money are we spending for these websites? How much are we spending on our social media? How much are we paying our social media team? How much is it to make this content? You need to be tracking and all that, but also then tracking what are the sales that are coming in? Or maybe you're looking at it in terms of, hey, maybe this is about a customer service thing. So do we rate our customer service improvement? That could be a return on your investment. It's not always just a dollar amount, like sales amount for your ROI when it comes to social media. Sometimes it's the community spirit you're bringing up, the improvement of your brand performance. You think of companies like, like Wendy's, their Twitter feed has been phenomenal and it's made up for their horrible French fries. Because people are like, I want to see, you know, Wendy's Twitter stuff. So you can kind of, you know, figure out what you want to do. But the thing is, is when you're using the analytics and you're tracking all this data, you can really see what posts are changing passerbys into buyers. And when you start to see what's working, you can do more. I know for me, I do the same thing. I look at the analytics. What videos do people like to watch? What videos get more views? All right, I'm gonna make more of those videos because those are the ones that are paying off, getting me more subscribers, getting me more not likes, getting me more views. You're gonna do the same thing. So make sure you're tracking everything. Now, another trend that's continuing on, this is going on for a while now, but I think it's important to really reinforce is that your social media, your web page, and your sales force, they all need to be on the same page. You do not want people to wonder, is this the Twitter feed for this company? Is this the LinkedIn page for this company? Does this person actually work for that company? You need to have that brand consistency across your social media so people are all on the same page because you don't want your sales force focusing on being, you know, super fancy dancy, yes, 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 but then your social media makes you seem like you're a five-year-old. No, that, that gets people confused, so make sure everybody's on the same page. That's why it's important you're gonna make a social media plan so everybody's kind of following the guidelines on the posts and things like that, but also then your sales team knows what's coming when it comes to social media, whether it is, you know, hey, we've got a buy one, get one free offer coming, we have discounts coming, they know to be prepared for that. Now, another thing that I've seen over the years, and this has gone more and more, is you're seeing social media move farther and farther up the kind of management team. Because I remember I had students when I first started teaching, uh, where I'm teaching now, 10 years ago, I would have students that would be hired to take over the social media for a Fortune 500 company. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, that's awesome. But, but why don't they have somebody doing that? They didn't. But now we see that, oh no, there's social media managers, there's people doing these things. It's becoming more and more part of the business. It's becoming more and more part of the management. So you can't just say, oh, let the young ones do the social media. Let, they understand that. No, everybody in every level needs to understand how the social media works, what are the most important you know, metrics we need to follow. And it's not always subscribers. It's not always likes. It's gonna depend on what you wanna get done. 
because when you have more knowledge about social media as you go higher and higher and up the decision making process then you're starting to make better decisions that will help social media grow your business overall and i think important to go along with that in terms of the analytics is in terms of numbers and stuff is remember quantity is not better than quality you need to have quality posts. You need to make sure you're looking on there and seeing, is this post worth going out? Because you can turn customers off just by sending out too many tweets or too many posts or giving them too many emails or whatever you're doing, that can really turn people off. So you really need to make sure you're reading through it and say, is this something that I would wanna get if I was a customer? What value are we adding by each post? What value are we adding for each email we send out? You wanna do this because otherwise you can turn people off. And then there's a trend that I see becoming more and more important, but it's an old school trend that's making a comeback. And that is social and online marketing is not enough in the B2B world. Look, I know a lot of people would rather just send emails or send text messages, but the impact of a phone call, the impact of a customer visit, the impact of come to our factory and meet our people and see what's going on is still super important. It's not just all digital and forget it. I would never say that. Social media is important, but being out there with your customers is still super important because in B2B, you gotta be where your customers are because relationships are key. Social media just helps you strengthen your relationships, but you still have to still focus on going to those trade shows, getting to know people, you know, rubbing elbows with everyone when you're out there and, and really, you know, making those cold calls, you still need to do that because social media is just helping us continue to build a relationship. It's not the only part of a relationship. I mean, anybody, if you have an online relationship, you know, eventually you need some physicality there too. You need to be there for that relationship to happen. That is not going away. As much as people have gone to, we want to do everything virtually, we want to do things online, we're going to do it all Zoom. Honestly, that phone call, that visit, that personal touch is still going to be a super important part of B2B marketing. And it's something that if you can integrate it into your social media, you'll see that with influencers. They'll have meetups with their fans because doing that, that personal connection expands their reach and influence over those people much more than just putting out another video. It's like, man, shaking that hand with somebody, getting to know them, turns people into really super fans, okay? So just something to consider. And so these are just some trends in marketing, or as I say, trends in B2B marketing that we really need to think about in terms of social media. And uh, I hope this helps you do better at your job and helps you do better with your business. I'll say bye from here in beautiful Key West, Florida.